Praise the Lord, everyone, and greetings from Zion Temple Apostolic Church, where our pastor is Suffolk and Bishop Don Reynolds, and the lady of the house is First Lady Linda Reynolds. I am Evangelist Charlotte Brown. I will be your Sunday school teacher this evening. And as always, I am truly elated and uh, honored and privileged that God would even see fit to uh, use such a vessel hey man it is it is a humbling experience uh, to be used by god amen so we are grateful it's friday we made it to another friday hallelujah <laughs> all praises to god amen those of us who have been in this work week i don't know what it's been like for you but it's been a, the, the the work week was working okay it's been a week amen but we are grateful to god that he carried us through he sustained all of us we are alive we're in our right mind so we are grateful so we are here for sunday school uh, i do want to take some time out to acknowledge our superintendent uh minister william eldridge amen and his family amen we also thank and praise god for our assistant superintendent brother otis webb and his family amen and just the whole entire sunday school staff and all of you all that are tuned in right now we are live and uh i will uh be on live with you all so uh of course we do like uh live dialogue so uh, feel free to give your comments because I will be uh, reading those comments here throughout the lesson. So for any questions, comments, come on, chime in. We, we all in this Sunday school lesson together. So today we are situated in Joshua chapter uh, 6. And the uh, title of this lesson is Jericho. Amen. We all know about when the walls of Jericho came down, amen. And the week before that, we had crossing the Jordan. And then before that, we had the 12 spies. So we, we, we've been hanging out with Joshua and all that good stuff. And this has been, it's been good, amen. And so we're going to have a quick word of prayer. And then we're going to dive in. Again, the lesson is in Joshua chapter 6. If you don't have your Sunday school book. Um, if you don't have, if you do have one, go ahead and grab it, grab your Bibles, uh, your pen and paper. If you want to take some notes, if you're a note taker, um, and if God hits you some kind of way with something, something inspires you or anything, jot that down, put it in your phone, do something, you know, always go back to it. Um, but if you don't have a Sunday school book, we are in Joshua chapter six and it's verses one through 25. I am going to read the entire text. It is quite lengthy, but I am going to try to get through it as quickly as possible. Amen. So let's go ahead on and have a quick word of prayer. Father, in your wonderful and matchless name, Jesus, God, we just thank you, Lord, for who you are. God, we thank you for being God all by yourself. God, you are absolutely positively perfect. There is no one like you, God. No one compares. No one can do what you do. God, we thank you, Father. Hallelujah for another opportunity, another day you have afforded us. God, we're in our right minds. We have health. We have strength. We have shelter. Lord, we thank you. But above all that, we thank you for what you did on Calvary. Lord, for shedding your innocent blood just so we might live. God, we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we are asking you on this evening that you have your entire way, that you speak, Father, that you allow your good word to fall on good ground in all of our lives, Lord. Speak through me, God, to me and for me, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, it is all about you, God, and we acknowledge your sovereignty, God. Hallelujah. We are humbled at you, Father, and we thank you. We praise you. We honor you and we adore you. And Father, I'm asking for an extra special blessing on everyone that's tuned in right now, God. Please bless uh, your people, Father, in your wonderful and matchless name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we are grateful. All right. I see we got Brother Kenny on, Sister Rebecca Graham, uh, Sister Cynthia, Elder Brown, Assistant Pastor Brown. Amen. I see Sister Swopes out there. Praise the Lord to all of the saints of Zion. God bless you. Glad that you all are on with us on this evening. Amen. So the focus verse is in Joshua chapter 6, verse 20. It says, So the people shouted, when the priests blew 
with the trumpets and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city every man straight before him and they took the city amen and then the lesson text uh, as I stated, it's Joshua uh, chapter 6, verses 1 through 25. And it says, the truth about God. God can provide victory through unconventional means. Amen. I'm sure we all know that to be truth in our lives. Amen. And then the truth for my life. I will follow God and will trust him for victory. Amen. Now, let's go ahead on and go to Joshua chapter 6. Let's go to Joshua chapter 6, and we're going to read verses 1 through 25. I'm going to go ahead on and start reading right now because, like I said, it is lengthy, and I don't want to be labor of time. So let's go ahead and get started. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because the children of Israel, none went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go around about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days, and seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns, and the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on and compass the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before the Lord and blew with the trumpets. And the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. And the armed men went before the priests that blew with the trumpets. And the re reward came after the ark. The priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And Joshua had commanded the people saying, Ye shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice. Neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout. Then, ye sh then shall ye shout. So the ark of the Lord compassed the city, going about it once. And they came unto the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. And seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew the trumpets. And the men and the armed men went before them, but the re reward came after the ark of the Lord, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. And the second day they compassed the city once and returned into the camp. So they did six days. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city, and the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she did she hid the messengers that we sent, and ye in any wise and ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves a curse when you take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city, every man straight 
before him and they took the city and they utterly destroyed all that was in the city both man and woman young and old and ox and sheep and the edge of the sword but joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country go into the harlot's house and bring out this the woman and all that she have as she swore unto her and the young men that were spies went in and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brethren and all that she had. And they brought out all her kindred and left them without the camp of Israel. And they burnt the city with fire and all that was therein. Only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and of iron they put unto treasury of the house of the Lord. And Joshua saved Rahab the harlot alive in her father's household and all that she had. And she dwelt, dwelleth rather in Israel even until this day because she hid the messengers which Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Amen. That was a lot of reading. Amen. But we praise God. We got through it. Amen. This is Sunday school. We go read the Bible. Amen. So, whoo, that was, that's enough. This is an amazing story of faith and trust in God. Amen. And doing exactly what God says to do and how to do it. Amen. Amen. And so we have three outlines here. Uh, the challenge at, Zer at Jericho, and we have some subtopics up under there. God gave Joshua an unconventional battle plan, Israel's obedience. I will choose to obey even when I do not understand God's plan. And no, it's only two outlines here. I thought it was three, but it's only two. And so um, marching to victory, the Israelites followed God's uh, plan to the letter. God gave Israel total victory over Jericho. And when we obey God, he will respond and tear down walls in our lives. Amen. Amen. So the lesson connection here, I'm not going to read through the whole thing because I did just read 25 verses in your hearing. Amen. So I'm not going to read through the whole lesson connection because, you know, I ain't trying to tire us out. But at the end of this lesson, the lesson connection basically is giving some histories. It talks about the Great Wall of China. It talks about the wall that the Romans built. It talks about the Berlin Wall, which I'm sure we are familiar with that. Amen. And how during uh, Ronald, uh, President Ronald Reagan's time, when he approached Gorbachev and told him to tear the wall down. Amen. And we know that the wall came down. And I like hearing the lesson connection towards the end where it says, not all walls are defensive in nature. Some are designed to keep people in. And so again, it talks about the Berlin Wall, which I'm not going to read through that. But I like this last part that it says, Often, all it takes is for someone courageous enough to make some noise. Amen. And we know that Joshua and Caleb, they were the only two that were courageous when Moses sent them over to spy out the land. And they came back with a good report. But the other 10 spies, they came back fearful and said that they couldn't take the land. But Joshua and Caleb, they had a different mindset. They had a different set of eyes. They wasn't looking through their eyes. They was looking through the lenses of the Lord. Amen. You can't look through your eyes. You got to look through the word of God, which is our lenses. Amen. That's how you have to view things. You can't because if you if you view it with your own eyes, yes, you will be fearful. Yes, you will. You will see defeat. But when you you view it through the word of God, line it up with the word of God, hallelujah, and that will cause you to see the correct way, amen, line it up with his word, so the first outline here, the first topic, the first outline is the challenge at Jericho, God gave Joshua an unconventional battle plan, so it began to talk about, you know, how the children of Israel, uh, how this new generation uh, could be sitting around with their children, their grandchildren, talking about what happened when they crossed over the red, when God split the Red Sea, amen, and they walked across on dry ground. I mean, I was thinking about this thing. I said, just thinking about uh, Marquette Beach. Imagine that, all that body of water out there, and if that water was to stand up on both sides, ooh, I, I just... 
If you just got to allow your mind to paint a picture of the word of God, you got to allow your mind to just visualize what happened back then. Amen. So it says here that the new generation of Israelites had experienced their own dry ground miracle. God had performed the miraculous and removed a great obstacle between them and their promise. Twelve stones from the dry bed in the Jordan River. One from every tribe was served as a memorial to future generations of God's miraculous intervention. As exciting as this moment was, these energized people of promise were soon to discover two key principles of advancement into God's promises. First, there are always battles along the journey into the promise. Amen. We, I think we all can agree with that. In the New Testament, the Apostle Paul would describe how the righteousness of God is revealed. From faith to faith, the just will live by faith. Amen. A person of faith will be led from one situation to another that requires faithful obedience to God and his righteous ways. Amen. So I like immediately how the um, lesson points to faith because serving God, it takes faith. It literally takes faith. Faith. I want us to go to Hebrews chapter 11. And I know some of us can just go ahead and quote that by heart. But let's let's go to Hebrews chapter 11 uh, verse 1. Because this walk, there are challenges on our journey. Amen. There are, we have encountered several challenges. Just look at the world now. And the challenges that we're even facing now. In, in, in this day and time. Amen. So I like here in Hebrews 11, uh, chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Then it goes on, by faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Then I'm going to jump down to five, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And then I'm going to jump down to verse six, but without faith it is impossible to, to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him faith. We have heard our bishop say faith is the currency to the kingdom of God. Amen. If you don't even believe God, God ain't even trying to hear you. That is offensive. When we don't believe God, it's offensive to him, saints. So we, if we are having any doubt in our life, we got to ask God to help and heal our unbelief. Amen. Because we don't want to be offensive to God. Amen. It takes faith to live this life that we're living. Uh, faith is one of the most important tools, weapons, if you will, that the child of God, us as children of good, uh, God have. Amen. Is our faith. Amen. Uh, the, the scripture says we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. We are serving God by faith. We are serving an invisible God that we cannot see, but we have seen his hand on our lives. Amen. That's the evidence. We have seen how he has transformed us and how he has changed us. Amen. So that is the evidence right there. So we need faith along this, uh, this journey. So it says here, the second key principle of advancement into God's promises is that God's methods and paths to victory are usually different from our preferences. Some have remarked, if you want to make God laugh, share with him your plans. If you would have asked Israel their ideal plan for breaching the walls of Jericho, it would have likely included ladders, fire, and battering rams. Yes, they would have would have to fight, but it would be an unconventional God-designed battle plan that would lead them to victory. A plan that would require great faith and unmistakably prove God was in control. Amen. 
So it they did this thing God's way. They didn't venture and say, well, no, I know Joshua said, don't say nothing. Wait till the seventh day. But man, we need to shout right now. We got to let the enemy know we out here. No, 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 no. They did exactly the way, did it the way Joshua told them to do. Let's go over to Isaiah really quick, 55 verses 8 through 9. Let's go to Isaiah really quick. Because we got to do this thing God's way. And that's why God has given us a leader to do, to lead us and to guide us because we don't, we don't. That's why God has an under shepherd. God is the, the, the over shepherd and then Bishop is the under shepherd. And we got to trust the God in him that is leading and guiding us into victory Zion. Amen. We got to trust and lead. Yeah, we, we're, we're in our own wilderness right now, but we are going by the leading of the Lord. Amen. We are going by, we're listening at what our leader is saying and we're going by the leading of the Lord. Amen. So in Isaiah 55 verses 8 through 9, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. That settles it right there. Let's do it God's way. <laughs> Amen. Just like they did here back at the wall of Jericho, they did it God's way and God gave them the victory. There are rewards when we do it God's way. Amen. So the first question here says, what are some mysterious ways you have seen God lead a person into greater arenas of faith? What are some mysterious ways you have seen God lead a person into greater arenas of faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me see if we got any uh, anybody out here that made any comments so far. Oh, I see First Lady is on here with us this evening. Praise the Lord, First Lady. Amen. Brother Redman. Amen. Amen. And so, like I said, the first question, what are some mysterious ways you have seen God lead a person into greater arenas of faith? And so I'll come back and check the answers. So we're moving on um, through the first outline, Israel's obedience. Between the Jordan River and Jericho, Israel received signs that God was in control and was blessing their faith and sanctification. I just want to stop right there for a minute. Not only did they see that, but they had... Um, the testimony of what God did back with Moses. Not only did they see what was going on in front of them, they also could pull from that history of what God did with Moses and the children of Israel when they crossed the Red Sea. So they knew God was able to do it for them. Amen. Word of Israel's successful crossing of the Jordan River on dry ground spread throughout Canaan. The kings of the cities were frightened and lost courage because of the miracle. Israel continued their sanctification in the fifth chapter of Joshua by reinstituting the covenantal sign of circumcision, which had ceased during their wilderness wandering. Additionally, they were now in the promised land, although they had not fully obtained the promise, but the blessing of obedience was becoming clear. They began to eat the fruit of the land. 40 years of manna as their daily diet had finally ended. So this new generation of the children of Israel, I also believe they were determined that they was going to get that promise. Amen. They was in they was in the promised land, but they wasn't all the way in it. Amen. And they I believe they learned the lesson, you know, from the uh, previous children of Israel. And that's why it pays to uh, listen to the pastor. It pays to listen to those who have the rule of you. It pays to listen to those who have experienced things that maybe you have not experienced. And somebody may tell you, hey, it's a ditch in the road right there. Don't you go that way. Pay, you know. Don't get to a place where you're not teachable. All of us need to remain teachable. Amen. Because we don't know everything. So I believe also that they also 
remembered what happened to the people before them and they was determined that's not gonna happen to me we not go wander for no 40 years in the wilderness no we're going to get our promise amen if god made us a promise i don't know about you but i want everything god promised me amen and if he said i'm gonna be with him in heaven one day i want that and that means i gotta do what i'm supposed to do According to his word, not how I take it and perceive it, but what he says in his word to get to where he is. Amen. All right. So let's see here. Have anybody responded? So I, I don't have any responses yet. So we're going to keep on moving. So it says here, obedience tends to beget obedience. Even though God's next plan on their journey into promise seems strange, they obeyed. They were learning to walk by faith. Amen. We walk by faith, faith saints, and not by sight. Amen. And so you cannot, if you base your walk with God off what you see, you probably, I don't know about you, but I probably would stop a long time ago. If I base it off what I see, if I base my walk of, walk of God off what I see right now, I'd probably be like, oh, Lord, it's discouraging out here. You know, Lord, what's going on? But no, we we're doing this thing by faith again. Well, we know faith is the currency to the kingdom. Amen. All right. And so um, the next point up under this outline, it says, I will choose to obey when I do not understand God's plan. I want to just ask a question. It's, this is not a question from the lesson, but it's in line with the question, with the lesson. Have you ever in your walk with God not understood where God had you at? You know, spiritually like, Lord, what's going on? I'm doing all that I can. And it just seems like, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm doing what I believe you told me to do. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. But Lord, this, this seems to not be working. But God says, trust me. Trust me, trust my word that I'm working this thing out for you. You just keep doing what you know to do is right. And just know that I'm working it on the back end for your good. Amen. So it don't matter. It All things, not some of the things, all things work together for our good saints. All things. So have you ever just been in your walk with God where you questioned Come on, let's be honest tonight. Have you ever questioned, Lord, what's going on here? What's going on, God? Help me, Lord, to understand. Come on, let's who who gonna be honest on tonight? Who gonna be honest? Oh, amen. Sister uh Swopes answered that question. Uh, what are some mysterious ways you have seen God lead a person into great arenas of faith? Uh, she said, when God made the sun be still. So they could win the battle with Joshua. Amen. Amen. That's right. Hallelujah. And then I see here, uh, uh, Minister Eldridge and Sister Eldridge quoting some scriptures here. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 and Romans 8 through 28. And I believe we're going to go there anyway during this lesson. <laughs> Amen. So, I mean, because it just, it fits right in. <laughs> Amen. All right. So let's, let's keep going here. It says, a variety of lifeless promises are buried on many Christians' walks of life. These lifeless promises are casualties of doubt. Jesus, people doubted and hesitated to obey God's plan. Many followers of Jesus live frustrated and unfulfilled and Frustrated and unfulfilled because they have never learned to fully trust and fully obey. They are often looking for loopholes to submission. Excuses abound for why they cannot submit. It is too costly, too hard, or too unreasonable. And they question, have God really said? Man, there is so much validity in that in these statements right here. But I am a firm believer that if you have the Holy Ghost, like the Bible says, this walk, it, it can get tedious. It can be discouraging. But we have learned with, with having the Holy Ghost that God is our comforter and he leads us. Yes, it does get uh, hard sometimes. Sometimes 
it is a sac. You have to sacrifice your will and your way. Amen. And follow hard after what God is saying. A lot of times us in our flesh, because this flesh is not going back to heaven. Amen. We know that, right? This flesh is not returning back to heaven. So this flesh is an enemy to us. This flesh is an enemy to God. This flesh wants what it wants, but we have to tell it no. We in the month of consecration right now. Come on. Who denying their flesh? Huh? Who's denying their flesh? And I know, I know. And we said, well, we do this every year. And I'm going to tell you, it's beneficial though. It's beneficial. It's beneficial to drown your mind in the word of God, to chase out all those ungodly thoughts. Amen. Huh? It's beneficial to push that plate back and tell your flesh, no, obedience is better than sacrifice any day. Amen. Any day. And I know we're not perfect. I, I, I hear that. I, I get it. I know we're not perfect, but that's why God has given us the Holy Ghost. He's perfecting us. Amen. He is perfecting us. And we can't always lean on the what well, God knows my heart because God expects us to live a certain way according to his word says. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He, he, he expects us to live what he has laid out in his word. His ways are not our ways. Amen. All right. So it says here, every Sunday, Christians gather in churches to sing songs of praise and worship. Many melodious anthems of praise flow from the lips of believers. And it says here, sadly, the songs are often sung dishonestly. Uh, they quoted the scripture is quoted here. Uh, this people draw nigh unto me with their mouth. And honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Help us, God. How does this relate to the songs of worship? What about the uh, beautiful chorus, I Surrender All? It is easy to sing, but do we really mean it? Do we really mean that we surrender all? Amen. And not just the first day when you went down in Jesus' name. And not just when you received the Holy Ghost. We have to do this every day. It's a choice that we have to get up and make every single day. For God I live and for God I'm going to die. And, and saints, let's just be honest. We as saints, as Christians, we do have some tough days. We do what a world and beat us, beat us up, worked and got on our last nerves. Amen. <laughs> It's been, I cannot be transparent. It's been a tough week for me at work. Oh my God, it's been tough. But man, that does not give me the liberty to flip out. That does not give me the liberty to just do whatever. Amen. Hallelujah. So it says here, it's so easy to sing, but do we really mean it? Honestly, for many, it is really just, I surrender some. Or consider the song, lead me, Lord, I will follow. Do we wholeheartedly mean that? What if he leads us where we do not want to go? Oh, my God. Until we really purpose in our hearts to live what we say and sing with our mouths, we are destined to experience far less of the kingdoms of the kingdom promises in God's word. It pays, saints. God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Hmm? It pays to be obedient. It says here, what are other songs we find easy to sing, but harder to live? What are other songs we find easy to sing, but harder to live? Come on, saints, chime in. I want to hear from you all. I want to hear from you all. I see Brother Redmond said, walk in the spirit. Absolutely. And Brother Kenny said, uh, amen. Yes. I don't know what he was saying it to, but amen. <laughs> to fight the good uh, fight of faith. Absolutely. Amen. So the next question we have out here is, what are other songs we find easy to sing, but harder to live? Come on, saints. Let's be honest. What are some songs? I want to see what y'all got to say. I know I know a few that's easy to, to sing. And then when the rubber meet the road, it's like, uh, you know, 
Um, so what are some songs? I definitely got one. I want to hear what you all are going to say. Amen. So it said, uh, Jesus said here, and these are some promises here. Jesus said, the meek shall inherit the earth. Those who hunger for righteousness sake shall be filled. The merciful shall obtain mercy. The pure in heart shall see God. And the peacemakers shall be called the children of God. This requires heart felt and purposeful obedience. The correlation between integrity, honesty, purity, prayer, fasting, forgiveness, and receiving specific promises of God are clear in his word. All of them are difficult. They require Job-like trust in God, even if it feels like it will kill us. Woo! When I read that, I was like, woo, that's tough. But it's true. It's true. Because sometimes, saints, we, we will go through. This is not a life promise of going through, of, of not going through. As children of God, we will be tried in the fire. Because God is trying to get us ready to be with him. Amen. We're not just going through just to go through. But we're going through with a promise, hallelujah, that we are going to see our Savior face to face and we are going to reign with him, hallelujah. Those who suffer with him, we will reign with him, huh? Hallelujah. So don't count your suffering as God has left you or God just got you out there by yourself. No, he said he will never leave us. He said he will never forsake us. Amen. Just like he was in the lion's den with Daniel. He was in the fiery furnace with the Hebrew boys. He's in it with us saints. Yes, he is. Be encouraged on this evening. Be encouraged. God is with us. He is fighting for us. He is providing for us. Hold on. Hallelujah. Because we have a reward. Hallelujah. We have a mansion in the sky. Hallelujah. And above that mansion, our father is there. Yeah, okay. I want my mansion. Yeah, I want my crown of life. But I want to be with my savior. Hallelujah. I want to be with the one who sacrificed his life. Hallelujah, so that we might live, saints. Hallelujah. It says here, but the promises are worth the struggle. Woo, hallelujah. But the promises are worth the struggle. Who agree with that? Are the promises worth the struggle? Hallelujah. Be encouraged this evening. Hallelujah. Influence with God and man is worth the struggle to maintain our integrity. Battling to stay pure in an impure world is worth seeing and experiencing God's fullness. Our generation desperately needs the miraculous precipitated need the miraculous precipitated by prayer and fasting amen saints and we we've been saying this for years this is nothing new to us we're we're in and i don't know what nobody's fasting like it's like life is like through the year but when we come up on january and we're doing it more consistently because we're doing it every day amen with the weekends off amen and so we're rebuilding that muscle of doing it like daily, daily, amen, every day. So we build, we're building a muscle. We build this muscle, but this should carry us going to February. Now it's not okay. I'm not going to fast none of February because I fast all of uh, January. The devil is a liar and you better believe the devil is waiting. He wait. Oh, they fasting now. I know. I, I, this is what they do. This is what they do. I know. We're going to see what they do in February, though. I'm going to fast. Huh? I'm going to push that plate back. Come on. This is an opportunity to re-strengthen that muscle and get back to it. Amen. It's And I get it. Sometimes we have those moments where we may go through a, 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 a whole month where we haven't fasted or go through a week where we haven't fasted. Be honest. Come on. In all your years of being saved, just be honest. We've all been there. Amen. We've all done it. Amen. But we're rebuilding this muscle. 
Amen. This that this thing that we're doing, yeah, we do this uh, every year, but I don't believe that it's in vain. Amen. I believe that it's building us. So let's see if anybody answered the question here. Uh, Elder Brown said, I will trust in the Lord till I die. Amen. That's the song he was quoting. Uh, and then Brother Remy said, the promise is, wor is worth the struggle. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're going to keep on moving. I don't know if you all ever heard the song called The Refiner's Fire. It's by, um, it's a it's a newer song, but uh, it, it talks about being refined by fire. I want to be tried by fire. Purify, take away what you desire. <laughs> Lord, your Lord be my guide. I'm quoting it wrong, but that that song got some strong, <laughs> some strong words in it. I'd be like, oh Lord, oh Lord. But I'd be singing it like, oh God, help me, Jesus. That but it's a beautiful song. It's a beautiful song. And I'm like, and it the song is basically saying, I want to be tried by fire. I'm like, ooh. Okay, God. <laughs> Amen. That's it's a good song, but sometimes I'm like, ooh, okay, God, you know my heart. <laughs> Amen. So it says here, so the next time you sing, I surrender all or some song like it, examine your heart and decide to surrender all. Surrender all in honesty when it does not seem profitable to your business dealings. Surrender all in the passions of your dating or marriage relationship to be and remain pure. Surrender all when someone wounds you and won't vengeance, but you choose to live clear of bitterness. Com complete obedience, even when we do not understand, brings the fullness of God's promise to direct our paths. As Proverbs 3, 5 through 6 states, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Amen. All right, we're moving on to the last outline, marching to victory. The Israelites follow God's plan to the letter. It says God's plan was clear. The priests were to carry the Ark of the Covenant around the city walls of Jericho one time per day for six days. Seven additional priests were to walk before the Ark, blowing seven ram's horns, while the rest of the people were to remain utterly silent. Then on the seventh day, they were to encompass the city seven times, seven times. On the seventh time, the people were supposed to shout as the priest blew the ram's horns. But then it says here, but why? Why not just walk around one time for one day? They would have had more energy for the battle that awaited them on the other side of the walls, right? Why must they walk around the wall at all? Surely God could just knock down the walls and spare them the effort. Are we sure God even said to do this? The children of Israel could have asked numerous questions. The human propensity to question God goes all the way back to the beginning when the tempter posed the question, have God said, amen. So we got to be careful. Now, I don't believe God gets offended if we ask him anything, but we got to be careful because when God tells us to do something, he knows why he's he's told us to do it. Amen. He knows our beginning to the end. So if God has given us clear instructions on what to do, we need to follow his plan. Amen. So God, and I was thinking about this lesson. Yeah, this was strange what God had told Joshua to have them to do, but you don't know them walking around them uh, walls like that for six days, not saying nothing. I could only imagine the other people on the other side of that wall. Ain't no telling how that was making them feel. God knew why he told them not to do that. That could have, they probably like, oh my God, they, that could have been building up a fear. They were already fearful because they already heard about what God had already did for them when they crossed over the Jordan River. So they were already fearful already of them. Amen. So then they get to this wall where their enemy is with to come and take that wall down. And they just walking around quiet, casing it, <laughs> casing it, if you will. Ain't no telling what God was doing in the mind of the enemy. That's why it pays to do what God says do, because you don't know. Even when 
people have wronged you and offended you. It does not, it does not pay to go tit for tat, saints. It really does not pay to do it. Sometimes you have to take the low road. You do. You the, the Christian walk, the saint walk. A lot of times you're taking the low road if you just want to be honest. Now, I ain't saying let nobody just, just do you in kind of way and walk on you. I, it, it's a way. Amen. A lot of times you have to bridle your tongue and take the low road. And I believe God, God looks at that. The Bible says live, live peaceably. Amen. With all men. Amen. Live peaceably. Amen. So... Ain't no sense of going tit for tat. Obey what the word of God says because you don't know how God is dealing with the person. You don't know how God is dealing with your enemy. You do not know what God is doing on the other end. Just like the uh, the children of Israel did not know what was going on on the other side of that wall, but they got around that wall like Joshua told them. Amen. This new generation of Israelites was learning to trust God's ways even if they did not understand them. Through the passing of the Jordan River on dry ground, they were discovering that obedience to God pays off even in the face of challenges. Another unspoken miracle happened at Jericho. There is no record of murmuring or questioning. A people whose history was rife with questioning, murmuring, and complaining simply did what God commanded them to do. They marched, they stayed silent, and they shouted exactly when instructed. Their act of co complete obedience yielded miraculous access to and momentum in the first major battle in the promised land. The wall fell down flat. Amen. Because they were obedient. It's a question here. It says, why is it important to obey God's commands even when they do not make sense to us? Why is it important to obey God's commands even when they do not make sense to us? All right, let's see. Amen. Brother Redmond said to obey is better than sacrifice. First Lady said it's only a test. Oh, she's quoting the song. It's only a test we're going through. It's going to be over real soon. Amen. Keep the faith. Don't give up. It's only a test. Amen. So uh, we're still under the second outline. It said God gave Israel total victory over Jericho. Before I move forward again, I want someone to answer this question. Why is it important to obey God's commands even when they do not make sense to us? Come on. Let me hear from you all this evening. All right. So it says, husband and wife, sons and daughters marched with their lips clenched tightly. They basically got around that wall, saints, and they didn't say nothing. And I like how the commentator pointed it out here. They were doubtless tempted to, to just chat a bit. Why? Probably nagged the thoughts of some, but they strictly observed God's command to be silent and march. Then on the seventh day, on the seventh trip around the wall, the shouts erupted. The rumble of the stones blended with the chorus of the crowd as the stones cascaded on the top of the other. Shouts of obedience quickly transitioned into shouts of praise and then to war cries. My God. Once again, obedience yielded God's favor and divine intervention as God did as he, as he had promised and toppled the walls. The people went straight up into the city and fought a victorious battle. Amen. Ah, what a time, what a time. Zion, 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 Zion. I, I'm, I'm telling you, I believe God. I believe God. We, 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 we fighting our own Jericho, but I'm telling you, there is victory on the other side. There is victory. There is victory. Saints, hold on. There is victory. Yes, it is. Amen. And so let's see here. Did anybody say anything? Amen. Sister Pet said, his thoughts are not our thoughts, nor his ways our ways. Amen. That's right. 
And so in the next section of the lesson, it said it talks about um, some archaeologists who talked about the walls of Jericho and their findings and everything. I'm not going to spend any time there on that because we believe what the word of God says. Amen. Simply, we believe it. We, I believe that there was a wall of Jericho. I'm not, I'm, I don't got time to be trying to argue with nobody over the Bible. <laughs> Amen. We know what the word of God says. Amen. So basically, there was an archaeologist who said that she basically said the wall of Jericho that it was not a true story. But then there was another archaeologist that came along and discovered some of the rubble and some of the rocks from the wall coming down in his research and study when he went over there. Amen. So it's another question here. It says, what commandments in scripture require great faith, but are worth the payoff? What commandments in scripture require great faith, but are worth the payoff? So it said, God gave Israel the victory he had promised. Did they have to fight? Yes, but once again, God provided the miracle by removing the obstacles that blocked the promise. Their complete obedience led to God's complete provision. The divine principle of submission and obedience is still at work in God's kingdom today. Amen. We know living a... Uh, Submitted life and a life of obedience is what God requires from us. Amen. And then there's one last question that says, why does God respond so favorably to complete obedience? Why does God respond so favorably to complete obedience? Amen. All right. It says when God's children will trust him uh, enough to obey him fully he will do the miraculous walls that seem insurmountable can be leveled and this is the last portion of the lesson where it says when we obey god he will respond and tear down walls in our lives all right barricades blocking spiritual progress can be removed Addictions and habits that have uh, have bound and si sentenced God's children to be wilderness wanderers for years can lose their grip. Demonic oppression and possession must disappear when a heart is fully submitted to God. James, the brother of Jesus, provided a clear picture of this reality of spiritual victory in James 4. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Israel discovered this at the wall of Jericho. We must discover at the walls that separate us from God's promises. Amen, saints. Amen. So it, it just, again, just to reiterate, it really uh pays to obey God. We can't you can't it's no way of getting around it. If we call ourselves living a saved life, you're we're not our own. We were bought with a price. Amen. And so we really do have to do it God's way. Because in the end, saints, we are going to win. In the end, we are it's 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 worth it. This life is so worth it. Amen. And I know, I know we have tests and trials, but this life is yet worth it. Amen. We have several seasoned saints online tonight during this Sunday school lesson, and they can tell you through the years of how God has brought them through, through the years of what God has done for, for them. Some of the saints on here have been in church, you know, uh, longer than some of us probably have been alive. Amen. And they can tell you about what God, God's uh, faithfulness and dedication uh, to them as they have been dedica dedicated and faithful to God. Amen. So it pays to serve God. It pays to serve him, saints. Amen. So I, uh, I appreciate this lesson. I appreciate everyone that's on. Um, if you look, get into the last part of the lesson where it talks about internalizing the message, it talks about a farmer who had an ox 
and how his ox had fell down in a well and how the farmer did everything he could to get the ox out of there and he tried several different ways but he, to no avail he could not get him out of there so he decided he was going to bury the ox and so he started scooping dirt over into the well and and every time he put dirt over there the ox according to the story here the ox shook it off his back and used that dirt to build a mound so he can climb up to get out of there and i like here where it says what was used as an attempt to bury it the ox transformed into a pathway to an improbable way of escape so those things that may come at you, that may be designed that the enemy throw his darts, um, he, the enemy comes to throw his darts and try to use different things, but God will take the very thing that the enemy is trying to use against you and use that thing to give you victory. Use that thing to launch you out. God will use the very thing the enemy is trying to kill you with. Ah, I feel that thing, saints. Hallelujah. God will take that thing and turn it around for our good. Hallelujah. Mm. Hiya. My God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So don't discount your test and trials because those things are going to build us. Hallelujah. It's building us. It's shaping us. It's molding us. Hallelujah. And it's getting us ready for that great day, saints. Amen. So again, I thank and praise God for all of you that tuned in this evening. We're going to close out with a word of prayer. But before we do, I do want to talk about our ways of giving. Amen. We know, hallelujah, that we have our Givelify. You can go and give on Givelify. You should see it on the screen right now. Um, you can also give via Zelle. Amen. And you can also give via Cash App. And also you can give in person. Amen. Come together in person with us on Sundays. Amen. This is something that our leader has asked us to do. In lieu of this lesson, let me just say that. He's asked the saints of Zion to come and meet us over at El Bethel. Don't, don't, don't question the method. Just come. Be obedient. It pays to be obedient, saints of Zion. It pays. Saints of Zion, friends of Zion, whoever is on here, it pays to be obedient to your leader and to those who have the rule over you. Amen. So if our leader is saying meet us at El Bethel, there's a reason we need to be there. Amen. I'm not trying to beat up nobody that haven't came, but I'm saying, come on. It's a reason. Let's go. Let's go and be a blessing to our brothers and sisters as they are being a blessing to us. Amen. So you can give your offerings in person and always, uh, if you're in the area and the church is open, you can always drop it here at the church. Amen. So we are going to close out in prayer again. I thank and praise God for all of you that tuned in uh, to this lesson. And we do know uh, this coming Sunday, we do have service at El Bethel. Um, every Monday at 6 p.m. is our prayer call at 6 p.m. Uh, that is hosted by uh, Sister Jen Eldridge and her staff and her team of people, a staff of people that helps her with that. And then on Wednesdays, we have our Bible class that's taught by our pastor, Suffolk and Bishop Don Reynolds, and also our uh, our assistant pastor, Elder Tyrone Brown, he is teaching as well. And then on Friday, we have our Sunday school that is taught, that is being led by Minister Bill Eldridge and his staff of teachers as well. Amen. So we just thank and praise God for everyone in their perspective places. And let's close out with a word of prayer. Lord God, in your mighty and matchless name, God, we just thank you. We praise you, Lord. We honor you. We appreciate you, God. Hallelujah. God, we thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Even when we do not understand, Father. Hallelujah. Even when the test and trial seem to be a bit much and overbearing, God, you are right there. Hallelujah. You're in the fire with us, God. And you said you would never put more on us than we are able to bear. God, I thank you for being a fair and just God. Hallelujah. I 
thank you, God, hallelujah, for how you weigh the test and trials in the balance, Father. We appreciate you, God. We thank you for your sacrifice, God. We thank you for what you did on Calvary, Lord, how you shed your blood. God, we thank you for saving us and allowing us to go down in your name and filling us full of the Holy Ghost. God, I'm asking you, Lord, that if there is any unsaved soul that is watching, any unsaved that will watch the replay, God, that you will convict their hearts. God, that you will let them come run and saying, what must I do to be saved? God, I'm asking that you bless our pastor and our first lady and their family. Lord, that you will bless our assistant pastor and his wife and their family. Lord, that you will bless our superintendent and his family and his assistant as well. God, I'm asking that you bless each and every vessel that's watching right now and those that will watch the replay. Lord, let your blood cover us, God, and we will be forever careful to give you all glory, honor, and praise, Lord. And we thank you for this lesson in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, saints. Have a wonderful weekend.